Living the good life is a phrase many people shout without truly understanding its depth. But what really is living a good life? In the hustle and bustle of our daily routines, amidst the chaos of the world, finding the essence of a truly good life can seem like a daunting task. Yet, the ancient philosophy of Stoicism provides a clear, practical blueprint for achieving a life of fulfillment, resilience, and peace. This guide aims to unwrap the profound yet accessible wisdom of Stoicism, offering you a concise journey through its core principles and how they can be applied to foster a good life in today's context. Stoicism teaches the value of understanding what is within our control and learning to let go of what isn't. It champions the importance of self-reflection, virtue and acting in harmony with nature. Over the next sections, we will explore Stoicism's fundamental teachings, from the art of embracing what life throws at us, to finding contentment in simplicity, and developing a mindset that views obstacles as opportunities for growth. You'll learn practical strategies and exercises that Stoics like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus practiced in their quest for a good life strategies that are surprisingly relevant and incredibly effective in our modern age. Whether you're seeking to improve your personal relationships, find greater meaning in your work, or simply live each day with a deeper sense of calm and gratitude, this guide offers a pathway to achieving those goals. By the end, you'll have a toolkit of stoic wisdom to help navigate the complexities of life with ease and grace. So, let us begin this exploration to uncover the true meaning of living the good life through the lens of Stoicism, and learn how you can start applying its timeless insights to cultivate a life of true happiness and fulfillment. It's better to keep some things to yourself than to tell other people about them. Ever since the beginning of time, one revealed secret has often been the difference between the rise and fall of great people, countries, and powers. We can use secrets as both shields and swords to protect ourselves or bring us down. What if, though, there are some secrets that are so important that they should never be told to anyone? The ancient Stoics were very good at keeping secrets, and they followed a code of silence and privacy that kept them safe and kept their honor. I'm going to talk about 10 things that as a Stoic, you should keep hidden and never tell anyone else about. To find out why they are all important and linked, watch the movie all the way to the end. 1. The fights you're having in silence. Behind every person you meet is a world of stories, some told out loud and most whispered. These quiet stories, which are often made up of problems and battles, often have a lot of power. Why? They form us, change the way we see things, and push us to our limits. But just like the toughest steel is made in the hottest fire, these fights within us make us stronger. Epictetus gently reminds us, What matters is not what happens to you, but how you react to it. These words remind us of all the times we've fought with our thoughts, carrying around problems that no one else knows about. Should we now keep everything inside? It's not about that, but about choosing who to tell and when. So, anyone can hear, but not everyone listens, and even fewer people understand. You can choose to share these fights with others, but you should be careful and only do so with people who have won your trust. These days, people always want to live their lives in the open, especially since social media is everywhere. It seems like everyone is telling each other everything, but sharing only some things is very powerful. Let some fights stay between you and yourself. A personal medal of honor, they are a testament to your resilience. It's normal to look for comfort in other people, but keep in mind that not everyone can hear how deep your song goes. There are times when the quiet places in your heart are the best places to hear the music of your battles. The Stoics thought that real change often happens when things are calm. 2. The whispers of worry about yourself. Have you ever been on the verge of making a choice but were stopped by the quiet words of doubt? 
Am I good enough? And what if I fail? Are soft words that live in our minds and keep us from reaching our full potential. It's tempting to yell out these fears in the hopes that someone will correct them, but a Stoic knows how important it is to keep them hidden, at least until they're fully recognized and dealt with. You may ask why, because it's not outside events that bother you, but how you feel about them. This idea, which comes from the old paths of Stoicism, says that facing our inner conversations instead of making them louder for everyone else can be life-changing. The way the world is now often makes our fears seem bigger than they really are. You both have self-doubt, and all of a sudden, a lot of advice comes at you, a lot of it contradictory and making things even more confusing. Instead, you might want to try something different. Listen to these words in the quiet space of your own thoughts. Let what you understand be the bomb, not what a lot of other people think. Face these thoughts, talk to them, and maybe even try to reason with them. In a world where every feeling can be seen by everyone, cherishing silence is more powerful than ever, especially when taming the wild voices of self-doubt. They need your full attention, not everyone else's. Shouldn't the leaks in a boat be fixed quietly first, before letting everyone watch it sink? It's about your future. Stoics don't talk about their plans for the future. You know someone is looking at you and is interested in what you're going to do next. It's very powerful to hold on to your plans for the future with quiet pride instead of letting them become conversation at the dinner table. You should hold on to your hopes, dreams and goals. You keep things mysterious and unpredictable by not giving away all the details. Today, everyone wants to share, but sometimes it's better to keep your cards close and let your deeds speak louder than your words. History is full of cases of people who brazenly announced their plans before they were ready, only to see them fall apart. Let's look at Napoleon Bonaparte. He was the smartest military leader ever, but his overconfidence and tendency to make plans public often hurt him. In the same way, business moguls like Howard Hughes were known for keeping their projects secret, which kept their rivals always one step ahead. It shows how powerful it is to be surprised and how smart it is to keep things quiet. We're more linked than ever these days, and social media sites make us want to share everything we plan to do. Stoicism, on the other hand, tells us that it's good to step back and take things more slowly. Not only do you protect your goals by keeping your future plans a secret, but you also give yourself the freedom to adapt and change without pressure from other people. Seneca's wise words, if a person doesn't know to which port they sail, no wind is favorable, keep running through our minds. It's a strong warning to plan our course but only share it when necessary and mostly with oneself. Holding on to your future doesn't mean you're scared or unsure. Instead, it means you have a deep understanding of how things work in the world. You're not keeping something from them to keep it secret. You're protecting the dignity of your journey and making sure that when the world sees your steps, they are steady, thoughtful, and always one step ahead. Four the urge to be too comfortable. Even though it might not make sense, it's actually smart to keep the fact that we often leave the comfort zone a secret. When you talk about every problem you face and every adventure that is different from the norm, the goal often changes. All of a sudden, you want to be praised for being so brave or bold. But the stoic way isn't about getting approval from other people. It's about growing from within. If you decide to read early in the morning or walk in the rain to feel alive, you might want to keep that to yourself the next time. It's not a show. It's a story of one person. Marcus asked in the background, is it for show or real progress? History books talk about Alexander the Great and his unmatched victories, but even he would sleep on the ground and eat the same food as his troops, no matter how many comforts he could call up. He didn't do this for show, he did it to keep himself grounded in real life and avoid getting lost in the haze of comfort and wealth. 
Even though we're not in charge of huge forces, our fights and problems are real and very important. Remember that mountains are shaped by wind, rain, and roads that go up and down hills. Even though our world changes quickly and comfort is often just a click away. In the same way, the problems we face, especially the ones we accept quietly, shape us. Enjoy your comfort zone, but don't forget to take those secret walks into the unknown. That's where we find the forms of ourselves that we forget about. 5. Your weak spots and flaws. People say that every hero has an Achilles heel, a weak spot that can bring them down even if they are strong. Due to their beautifully flawed nature, humans have both strengths and weaknesses. These weak spots, the raw, sensitive parts of our minds, should be kept safe, not shown to the world. They shouldn't be hidden or denied. They should be treated with the respect they deserve. A voice that sounded like Epictetus said, man is affected not by events, but by the view he takes of them. This means that our weaknesses are not what define us, but how we see them. It's important to accept your weaknesses because they show how hurt you were in the past, what you've learned, and even the fear of future fights. More than that, they're very personal. Making them public can leave us open to judgment from others, which can sometimes change how we understand or accept them. By recognizing these points in private, we protect ourselves and make sure they aren't used against us or misread. This gives us a chance to work on them and turn them from weak spots into growth areas. Throughout history, many important people were very aware of how weak they were, but they chose to keep their weaknesses to themselves, using them to drive them instead of stopping them. Abraham Lincoln, for example, had many mistakes and times when he felt sad. Instead of talking about these problems with other people, he took them on himself and let them shape how he cares for others and leads others. On the other hand, Julius Caesar was weak because he put his trust in close friends, which led to his sad death on the Ides of March. These events in history show how important it is to be aware of our weaknesses, treat them with care and make sure they don't bring us down. The standard these days is to share too much. Sometimes it's too much to bear your feelings and let everything out in the open. Still, there is power in choosing when to be quiet. Know your weaknesses, value them, and work on them, but don't feel like you have to share them with everyone. You can leave some pages of your book open. After all, secrets are interesting on their own, and sometimes the strength is in the parts that haven't been read yet. Sixth, your own personal complaints. Some people say that holding a grudge against someone is like drinking poison and expecting them to die. It feels like a heavy burden, a steady noise in the ear, and most of the time, it's not worth the effort. As a Stoic, on the other hand, deciding to deal with personal problems inside oneself leads to inner balance and self-mastery. By making the decision not to let out every annoyance, you build up inner resilience and learn how to deal with problems without letting them consume you. Someone once said, it's not things that upset us, but our judgment about things. This makes me think of Epictetus. Think about this. When you share every annoyance or anger, you're not only spreading negativity, you're also quietly looking for approval for how you feel. When you hold back and think about yourself, you give yourself time to ask, is this complaint valid? Can I make it stop? Should it change the way I feel? When we think about our problems in this way, we often realize that many of them are temporary and not worth our time. And for those that are real, facing them head on instead of just talking about them can be a lot more rewarding and helpful. As we look back through the ages, we find stories of people who let their personal problems take over their lives, which ended badly for them. Think about the sad story of Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. Years of public and private grudges led to a deadly fight between two people who hated each other. Both men paid a high price. Burr lost his image and later his own melancholy reflection on his decisions, while Hamilton lost his life. 
Their story is a stark warning of what happens when you let your personal grudges control what you do. Our fast-paced world often makes us need to vent as a way to relax. However, Stoicism says the opposite. It's about dealing with problems on an inside, figuring out where they come from, and moving wisely instead of rashly. The next time you feel that familiar sting of irritation, take a moment to think about it. Ask yourself if sharing this complaint will actually make things better or if it will just make things worse. Because sometimes the best reaction is to be quiet and peace is the best win. 7. Your own accomplishments and wins. Getting something done, no matter how big or small, gives you a quiet sense of pleasure. But because of how busy life is these days, we often have to share these moments. The Stoic Road, on the other hand, tells us to be proud of our achievements inside rather than looking for approval from others. Why? This is because approval from within lasts. It's real. When you talk about your accomplishments a lot, they can lose some of their meaning and become nothing more than conversation starters. This isn't meant to take away from the joy of sharing successes with people you care about. It's just a reminder that not every win needs an audience. It's about knowing the difference between wanting to be liked and sharing happiness. As we become more self-reliant and deeply respect our own growth and accomplishments, we draw power from within. This sense of self-reliance protects us from the uncertain ups and downs of praise and criticism from other people. History is full of examples of people who bragged about their successes only to face problems they didn't expect. Think about the story of Icarus, who wasn't really a person in history. It's based on things that have always been true about people. He flew too close to the sun, even though his father told him not to. He was excited about flying. He fell into the water as his wings and wax melted. He pushed the limits out of pride and to get attention, but that was what killed him. Being humble about your success doesn't make it less important. It makes it more important. With constant connection, living in the modern age brings both new challenges and chances. The next time you do something great, enjoy it for a moment. Then give some thought to who you want to share it with. Eighth, the quiet things your heart wants. Have you ever found something so small and unimportant that it made your heart skip a beat? It could have been a secret dream, like wanting to learn a new instrument or dance in the rain. These small personal longings are often like whispers that are easily lost in the noise of daily life. It's normal to want to share these brief times and small goals with other people. Share it and it will become real, says a small voice. But does it? Most of the time, vocalizing these dreams too soon could cause them to be crushed by other people's unasked views. Some people might not get why you want to learn to play the ukulele or why you started gardening all of a sudden, and that's okay. According to a wise Stoic philosopher who lived many years ago, dreams whispered to the heart are for the soul, not the crowd. The famous philosopher Socrates never wrote down his ideas. He taught Plato a lot, and that's how we know most about him. But there's something interesting about this. Socrates never wrote anything directly, so we don't know what he really believed or what he wanted. What small wants did he have? That's the beauty of it. We may never know. There is a strong message that not everything needs to be made public. Keep some items close to the chest. Take a moment right now to protect the dreams you haven't shared yet in a world where everything is open for everyone to see. Allow them to grow in the quiet of your heart. Then maybe let them go when they're ready to face the world to take both praise and criticism. Keep them safe until then. They are your hidden power and quiet song of hope. You can make magic happen with them at your own pace and on your own terms. Ninth, your own progress. When a worm cocoons, it goes through a deep change inside that can't be seen from the outside. Imagine if that worm felt the need to tell everyone about every little step it took. Not only would it be annoying, but it could even stop its change. 
It is holy to keep the details of your personal growth to yourself, just like this natural wonder. Every step you take to improve yourself is a gift, as is every new idea or knowledge you gain. The catch is that not all riches are meant to be shown off. There are some that are meant to be felt, to hit you deep inside. Now, this isn't meant to call for complete silence. Sharing can help people feel better and even inspire them. What the Stoics stress, though, is how important reflection is over speech. Seneca once said, As long as you live, keep learning how to live. Notice that he didn't say, Keep telling everyone how you live. In a time when record-keeping our lives is almost second nature, the rush to tweet a thought, share a personal milestone on Instagram, or vlog about inner struggles can sometimes take away from the experience itself. Pause and ask yourself, am I sharing to be validated or to connect with someone in a real way? The difference is important. Another wise saying from the Stoics, or maybe from Marcus Aurelius' meditations, that can help you center yourself is this. The universe is change, life is opinion. Change is a very personal journey, and people have many ideas about it. It can be more helpful to row quietly through the vast seas of personal growth than to shout at every turn. In the end, your changed self, the final goal, will say louder than any update ever could. 10. The slow rise and fall of your emotions. A lot of different feelings, like happiness, sadness, love, anger, and many more, paint the picture of life. It's common to show how we feel in public these days, especially with the rise of real-time status updates and stories, but there's a power in keeping some feelings close. Being restrained isn't the same as stifling your feelings. Instead, it means realizing that your feelings are very unique and often complicated and multi-layered. When you share them in real time, you might not get their full meaning across, and the outside world isn't always kind to raw feelings. As a Stoic might gently tell us, feelings that are held lightly develop in their own time, showing us depths that we miss when we are in a hurry. Think about Marcus Aurelius, the famous Roman ruler who was a Stoic. We now call his private notes, which were full of deep emotional thoughts, meditations. These were not big public statements, they were private thoughts that he had for himself. We can see ourselves in him because he doesn't want to share every private moment with the world. How often do we take the time to really see how we feel before letting them affect other people? People who act quickly are praised in today's world, but remember that it's smart to let your feelings settle and fully understand them before speaking out. Not every event needs a post or story right away. When you hold on to and think about certain emotions, they can grow into greater insights or change into something completely different. So, the next time your feelings get strong, give them some room and time to breathe. They are, after all, your own journey through life, and not all journeys need people to come along with them. Some trips are better taken alone and should only be shared when the heart really wants to. As we talk about these eight habits, keep in mind that becoming more self-aware is the first step toward change. By being aware of these habits, we can start to replace them with stoic ideals that will give us the strength, purpose and inner peace to live a life that is full of them. The first habit is putting things off. Many of us put things off or procrastinate, which is what Epictetus said. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. In the end, it makes us less determined, slows us down, and takes away valuable time that we could use for personal growth and important projects. Carpe diem, which means seize the day, has been used for a long time to help people stop putting things off. The idea behind Stoicism is to live in the present and enjoy it to the fullest. On the other hand, putting things off comes from worrying about the future or not wanting to do the thing that needs to be done. To break this habit, we need to adopt a Stoic mindset 
and keep telling ourselves that the only time we have real power over is right now. Stoic philosopher Epictetus told us to focus on what we can change and let go of what we can't. People often put things off by thinking too much about what might happen or how hard the job is instead of just doing it. We can break free from the chains of putting things off by following the stoic advice to focus on the process rather than the result. Set small goals that you can reach and keep working towards them. Accept the pain and insecurity of the present moment. It is in these tough times that we grow and gain the strength to take on bigger challenges. Keep in mind that time is limited and every day you wait is a day you'll never get back. The second habit is talking badly to yourself. As Marcus Aurelius said, our life is what our thoughts make it. How we talk to ourselves has a big effect on our confidence, self-esteem and health as a whole. Talking badly to ourselves all the time makes us weaker because it lowers our self-esteem and stops us from reaching our full potential. Stoicism teaches us how to change our negative thoughts into logical ones and more self-compassionate ones. Marcus Aurelius, a famous Roman ruler and Stoic philosopher, said it was important to pay attention to what we say to ourselves. In order to fight bad self-talk, he held that our thoughts shape how we see the world. First, just notice your thoughts without judging them. When self-criticism or self-doubt starts to creep in, catch it and fight it with logic. You should ask yourself if these thoughts are based on facts or are just a result of being afraid and insecure. Self-compassion means being kind and understanding to yourself, the same way you would be with a friend who is going through the same thing. Focus on what you can learn from your mistakes and how you can get better instead of berating yourself for what you think are your flaws or mistakes. If you replace negative self-talk with reason and self-compassion, you'll find inner strength and resilience that will help you handle life's obstacles with poise and confidence. The third habit is avoiding problems. If you want to improve yourself, be ready for people to think you're stupid and clueless. Avoiding difficulties and staying in your comfort zone is a bad habit that holds you back from growing and developing. It keeps you from getting more patient, brave and able to handle new scenarios. According to Stoic thought, we should view pain and problems as chances for self-development. Epictetus thought that meeting difficulties and going beyond our comfort zones were common ways to grow as people and develop self-mastery. People think that facing difficulties instead of avoiding them is important for personal growth and making yourself better. Stoics think that we can become more patient, more moral and better understand ourselves and the world around us by choosing to go through hard times. People today tend to look for safety and avoid any kind of pain. We usually pick the simplest route because we like ease of use and quick satisfaction. This might help for a short time, but it can slow our long-term growth and keep us from meeting our full potential. When we avoid obstacles, we miss out on great chances to learn and grow. The Stoics teach us that real strength comes from being able to face problems head-on and wait for them to pass. We gain patience, learn important lessons and get stronger traits like courage, perseverance and resilience through these obstacles. We can't grow as people or as thinkers if we always look for safety and avoid difficulties. We stay in the same place and don't reach our full ability. People who follow the Stoics' philosophy tell us to leave our comfort zones and do things that test our limits. Not only do these things make us more capable, but they also boost our confidence and make us happier. Also, dodging difficulties can make you afraid of failing. We miss chances to learn from our mistakes and get better when we always stay on the safe side and avoid taking risks. Stoic philosophy tells us to accept loss as a normal part of life and use it as a chance to learn. We can learn from our mistakes and use that knowledge to move forward by approaching loss with a stoic mindset. 
It's important to remember that wanting pain doesn't mean on purpose wanting to suffer needlessly. Stoic thought says that we shouldn't hurt ourselves for no reason. Instead, it tells us to keep our cool and face problems logically. It's about shifting our viewpoint and realizing that being uncomfortable is a normal part of life that can help us grow and become better versions of ourselves. We gain control of our lives by intentionally seeking obstacles and pain. We learn to depend on our morals and inner power instead of what's going on around us. Stoicism tells us to pay attention to what we can change, our ideas, our deeds, and how we deal with problems. Our happiness and success depend less on things outside of ourselves. Putting stoic ideas into practice can have a huge effect on our lives. We can go through life with calm and a sense of mission. We learn how to handle problems, mistakes, and things that don't go as planned. We learn to see difficulties as chances for development and self-improvement rather than as a threat to be overcome. To maintain a stoic mindset and see it through, it's important to keep an open mind about this subject and be ready to question our present habits. We can create a strong, adaptable mindset that is focused on personal growth by noting our propensity to avoid pain and adopting stoic principles of meeting problems head on. So welcome pain and difficulties and begin the path of self-improvement and learning. The fourth bad habit is being too focused on material things. The fourth habit on the list is being too attached to material things. In stoic thought, ethics and inner values are more important than things in the outside world. But if we care too much about material things, we might lose sight of what really counts and stop being happy in the long term. It's easy to get caught up in the chase of material wealth in today's world, where consumption is king. People often think that having a lot of stuff will make them happy and satisfied. Stoicism, on the other hand, tells us that things in the outside world are only temporary and can't be changed. They might get lost, stolen, or broken. When we depend on them for happiness, we leave ourselves open to being constantly let down and unhappy. When we connect our happiness and sense of self-worth to things, we can't stop wanting more. We can become obsessed with getting rich, always looking for the next big deal or the newest tech tool. This never-ending desire can make us unhappy because there's always something new to want or someone who has more than us. A famous Stoic philosopher named Seneca stressed how important it is to tell the difference between wants and needs. Too much selfishness comes from always wanting more and the wrong idea that owning things will make you happy in the long run. Stoic philosophy tells us to think about our wants again and put those that are in line with our values and well-being at the top of the list. Start by being happy with what you already have to break the habit of being too materialistic. Know that the chase of material things can trap you in a loop of wanting more and being unhappy with what you already have. Change your attention from getting things to getting values like knowledge, courage and kindness. These are the real things that make you happy. Stoic philosophy tells us to stop focusing on things we can get and start working on developing good qualities inside us. We can choose to be wise, brave, calm and fair and these traits can make us happy for a long time. We can find deep meaning and happiness in life by valuing these values and trying to improve them. Also, being too attached to material things can make you feel unsafe and anxious. We might always be afraid of losing what we have or look at other people and think they have more than we do. This connection makes us feel fear and envy, which makes it hard to live in peace and harmony. Stoic philosophy tells us to practice detachment to get rid of this problem. This doesn't mean we should give up all of our material things. We should instead build a good bond with them. Understand that things we own are not what makes us happy or validates us. They are just tools that can be used to make our lives and the lives of others better. 
Expressing thanks is a method for growing detachment. We can be happier and less attached to material things by being grateful for what we have and focused on what really counts. We can also practice simplicity, which means making our lives simpler and getting rid of things that aren't important. Getting rid of materialism can help us act in a way that is in line with stoic ideas. We can concentrate on growing morals, forming deep relationships with others, and making a difference in the world. We can find true happiness and live a life based on stoic ideals, thanks to this change in mindset. To sum up, being too attached to material things makes our practice of stoic thought less strong. It takes our attention away from inner values and the search for permanent happiness. By realizing that things in the outside world are only temporary and practicing detachment, we can break free from the circle of desire and find happiness in developing values and following stoic principles. Fiveth habit, looking for approval from other people. Seeking praise from other people is a bad habit that can make your stoic theory less strong. Stoic philosophy tells us that it's more important to focus on our own good qualities than on getting approval from other people. Too much dependence on outside praise can make you reliant on other people's views and weaken your sense of self. Since social media sites are becoming more and more famous, it's normal for people to want support from other people. A lot of the time, we judge our happiness and sense of self-worth by how many likes, comments and fans we have. When you count on other people's views and praise, this constant need to be liked and accepted can make your self-esteem weak. Stoicism, on the other hand, tells us that real happiness and satisfaction come from inside. Stoic thinkers stress how important it is to build good qualities like self-control, knowledge, courage and fairness. These ideals don't depend on what other people think or whether they accept us. Instead, they are traits we can develop and grow within ourselves, no matter what is going on around us. When we always want other people to like us, we give up our power. We let new views change us quickly and our sense of self-worth depends on their approval. This can make you keep looking for approval from other people, which can make it hard to be happy and at peace with yourself. To break this habit and strengthen our practice of Stoic philosophy, we need to understand that looking for praise from other people is temporary and often out of our control. Other people's views can change and trying to get their approval is a never-ending process. Instead, work on building ideals within yourself and making sure your actions are in line with Stoic principles. Learn to understand and accept yourself. When you want praise, pay attention to what you're thinking and feeling. Ask yourself why you need praise from other people and think about whether it fits with your values and goals. Remember that what makes you valuable is not what other people think of you, but what you do and how you act. Increase your self-confidence in your capacity for self-analysis and decision-making. Try to accept yourself by using the stoic ideals to judge your deeds. Instead of comparing yourself to others, work on growing and improving yourself. Remember that your happiness and satisfaction come from inside you, not from outside sources. Put together a group of people who will back you and help you grow, instead of people who will always attack you or make you feel bad about yourself. Get comments from people you know who only want what's best for you, but keep in mind that what they say shouldn't define your job. To sum up, constantly seeking praise from other people is a habit that makes practicing stoic thought less effective. Realizing that it's pointless to judge ourselves by what other people say, we can focus on building our own ideals and finding happiness within ourselves. Learn more about yourself and make friends who can help you. Doing so will help you live a more moral and satisfying life and improve your practice of stoic thought. Sixth habit, not being able to deal with bad feelings. Stoic philosophy tells us that we should use our minds and not let our feelings control what we do. But when we give in to bad feelings like anger, 
envy or fear, we lose the power to stay calm and behave in a good way. Let's learn more about this subject and find out how giving in to bad feelings affects our stoic practice and our health as a whole. Emotions that are bad seem to overpower logic and make it hard to make decisions. When our anger takes over, we often act without thinking and say or do things we later wish we hadn't. When we're jealous, we might feel angry and resentful, which can hurt our relationships. Fear can hold us back and keep us from taking necessary risks or meeting obstacles. These feelings not only make it harder to make good choices, but they also slow us down as we try to develop good traits like self-control, patience and kindness. Stoics believe that feelings are just impressions that come from how we think about the world. Some people called Stoics think that we have power over how we think and feel. We can look at our thoughts and judgments, question the ones that make us feel bad and form thoughts that are consistent with reason and morality by practicing mindfulness and self-awareness. Apatheia, which is often misread as total detachment from feelings, is one of the central ideas of Stoic thought. It's about building emotional resilience and keeping your cool when things get tough, not about stifling or ignoring your feelings. Stoics agree that bad feelings are normal and can't be stopped, but they tell us to deal with them by using logic, self-control and understanding. So how can we break the habit of giving in to bad feelings and make our stoic practice stronger? Take a look at these strategies. Improve your mindfulness. Being more mindful can help us notice our feelings as they come up. Being mindful lets us notice our feelings and thoughts without getting caught up in them. Being aware of this gives us a chance to stop, think and choose a more sensible reaction instead of moving without thinking. Examine your basic beliefs. When you feel bad feelings, take some time to look at the basic beliefs that are causing them. Are your opinions based on a true picture of the situation or are they skewed by bias or foolish beliefs? You can change your viewpoint and feel less negative feelings by questioning and reorganizing these opinions. Reflect on your ideas, actions and the results of those actions on a regular basis to practice self-reflection. Find out what habits are making you feel bad and try to think of other ways to deal with them. You can create effective emotional control techniques and spot areas for possible improvement through self-reflection. In times of anger or rage, remember yourself of the stoic principle that says you should focus on virtue instead of getting even or making things worse between people. Think about what will happen in the long run if you act on your bad feelings and try to react with understanding, forgiveness and kindness. Embrace peace. The stoic way of thinking tells us to accept what we can't change and concentrate on what we can. Recognizing that outside circumstances and other people's behaviors are outside of your power, adopt a calm mindset. Giving up the need to control everything can help you feel calmer and less affected by bad feelings. By using these methods over and over, we can break the habit of giving in to our bad feelings and get better at being stoic. Always keep in mind that this process takes time and work. We may make mistakes along the way, but every mistake is a chance to learn and grow. Adhere to the stoic ideas of knowing yourself and not giving up as you try to live a better, more happy life. In short, letting bad feelings control our actions goes against the practice of Stoicism. Negative feelings can slowly lose their power over our lives if we practice mindfulness, questioning our judgments, self-reflection, choosing virtue over anger and accepting peace. By doing this, we connect ourselves with Stoicism's ideas of reason, resilience and inner peace, which makes our lives better and more satisfying. Number seven is focusing on mistakes made in the past. If you're a Stoic, you should try not to think about your past mistakes too much. Stoicism tells us to focus on the present 
accept what has happened, and move on from our mistakes instead of focusing on them all the time. However, a lot of us get stuck in a loop of regret, guilt and self-blame that stops us from growing as people and going forward. When we keep thinking about the mistakes we've made in the past, we encourage bad feelings and feel stuck. This habit not only makes it harder to be happy and at peace, but it also keeps us from fully enjoying the moment and making good changes. Realizing that we can't change the past is one of the most important ideas in Stoic thought. A well-known Stoic philosopher named Epictetus said, what really scares and upsets us is not external events themselves, but the way we think about them. This quote shows how our thoughts and views affect how we see and experience the world. When we think about the mistakes we've made in the past, we let bad thoughts and feelings take over, which causes us to suffer needlessly. Stoic philosophy tells us to accept our past actions and their results, own up to them, and focus on what we can do now to make things better for ourselves and our situations. It's important to show kindness and understanding if you want to break this habit. As people, we make mistakes all the time, and it's a normal part of growing and learning. It's not healthy to blame yourself for things you did in the past. Instead, you should work on accepting and knowing yourself. We can learn from our mistakes if we change how we think about them. We don't have to see them as mistakes. Instead, we can see them as lessons that help us grow as people. Every error offers the chance for development and self-improvement. We can let go of the weight of our past errors and concentrate on the here and now by adopting this mindset. Mindfulness is another effective method for overcoming the tendency to focus on past transgressions. Focusing on the present moment without judging it is what mindfulness is all about. Focusing on the present can help us break out of the cycle of sorrow and fully enjoy what we are experiencing at the moment. Making it a habit to be thankful can also help us focus on the good things in our lives instead of the bad things that happened in the past. By making it a habit to be thankful for the present moment and the lessons we've learned from the past, we can focus on the good things in life and feel satisfied. Lastly, stopping the habit of thinking about mistakes you've made in the past takes work and a dedication to following the ideas of Stoic thought. Remember that we can choose how to deal with our past and that focusing on our mistakes will only keep us from living a happy and good life. Ignoring the past, being kind to oneself, practicing mindfulness and making thanks a habit can help us break this habit and create a more stoic view of the world. Our mistakes help us grow as people and they can also help us focus on what really matters, the present moment and the goal of virtue. Free yourself from the chains of sorrow about the past and follow the ideas of Stoicism to live a more worthwhile and good life. Putting other people's well-being last is habit number eight. Cosmopolitanism is a thought in Stoic philosophy that says we should all care about the well-being of each other because we are all part of a bigger human group. Ignoring other people's wants and pain is a bad habit that makes our Stoicism weaker and keeps us from living a good life. Stoic philosophy tells us to work on being good by doing things like being kind, caring and fair. All of us need to have these values in order to be happy and healthy, and so does everyone else. If we don't care about other people's pain, we keep unfairness and inequality going, which goes against the ideas of Stoicism. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman ruler and Stoic philosopher, said it was very important to be kind and respectful to others. He thought that we should try to help other people and work for the greater good. Helping people in need and working for social justice are acts that are in line with Stoic ideas and help us live a better life. If you want to stop ignoring other people's well-being, you need to work on your understanding and kindness. Try to understand other people's points of view and situations by putting yourself in their shoes. 
Realizing how much pain they are going through can make you more compassionate and want to help. Do nice things for other people and give to them. You can make a big difference in other people's lives by being kind. You can do this by sharing your time, giving money to charity, or just listening. By helping the people around you, you improve your link to the human group as a whole and work for the common good. Also, speak out in your neighborhood for social justice and equality. Speak out against unfairness and wrong and work to make society more fair and open to everyone. You follow the principles of Stoicism and show your dedication to living a good life by standing up for other people's rights. It might seem strange to keep your plans and goals to yourself in a world where social media sites push us to share every moment of our lives. But silence has power. Marcus Aurelius, on the other hand, was aware of the importance of silence. He thought that the more we talk about our goals and plans, the more likely it is that we will lose focus and energy. Think about this. When you tell everyone about your big goals, they will have a lot of thoughts, questions and demands for you. You seem to have given up on a dream that's still very young before it was even fully formed. Marcus Aurelius, who was a Stoic, would tell us to keep our goals and energy safe by keeping them close to our hearts and not letting other people validate them. Stoicism is based on the idea that our happiness and satisfaction should not rest on things outside of ourselves. Marcus Aurelius tells us that true happiness comes from within, even in a world where people are always looking for praise, approval and approval. You can be affected by other people's thoughts and views when you tell them about your plans. Let's say you want to be a famous artist that people love. You've been working hard on your book and giving it your whole heart. Your work is weak right now, like a young plant that has just started to grow. If you tell other people about your dream too soon, their doubts, criticisms or lack of interest could become like strong winds that threaten to topple your plant. Marcus Aurelius tells us to plant our dreams in the ground of our own belief and commitment. We shouldn't think about telling everyone about our dreams until they have gotten stronger. By doing this, we protect our inner peace and shield ourselves from the whims of other people. When you're on social media, it's easy to look for approval from other people through likes, comments and follows. Lots of the time, we feel like we need to tell everyone about every little thing we do well. What if we took a step back and thought about the value of not knowing? Marcus Aurelius's Stoic lessons tell us that trying to get fame and attention is pointless most of the time. Instead of looking for praise from other people, he tells us to find happiness in the quiet joy of what we've done. People will think more about what we do than what we say when we don't tell them. Think of the great artists, scientists and thinkers who have lived in the past. A lot of them worked hard without being noticed for years or even decades before their work was praised. They were able to focus on their work, improve their skills and make important impacts to society because they didn't share their plans and goals too soon. For Stoics, the main idea is to build up your own power and resilience Building a mindset that can handle life storms with poise and calm is what it's all about. When we tell other people about our hopes and dreams, we run the risk of being let down and disappointed if things don't work out. Marcus Aurelius tells us that keeping our plans secret is a good way to protect ourselves from the unknown in life. This doesn't mean we should keep things to ourselves or not trust other people. Instead, it means we should be smart about who we trust and pick them carefully. Instead of telling everyone about your dreams, share them with people who really understand them and support you. By doing this, you build a security wall around your goals. You become less easily hurt by abuse, failures or the fear of failing from other people. Being strong inside gives you the resilience and drive of well-forged steel. Marcus Aurelius wrote a lot about how important it was to be patient. 
He knew that big things take time to grow and that rushing to tell people about our plans too soon can hurt our long-term goals. You give yourself time by being patient and resisting the urge to tell people what you're going to do. It's time to work on your ideas, get the tools you need, and make sure your actions are in line with your long-term goals. This careful method, which comes from stoic knowledge, makes success more likely. When you surprise other people with your accomplishments, it's magical. When you don't tell everyone about your plans, you can surprise them with what you can do and go above and beyond what they expect. Marcus Aurelius knew how powerful this factor of surprise could be. Think about the story of a talented artist who trained hard by themselves and never told anyone that they wanted to become a master. No one could believe how skilled and talented they were when they finally played on a big stage. The factor of surprise made this accomplishment even more powerful, making a permanent effect on those who saw it. You build excitement and interest by keeping your plans a secret until you're ready to share them. You let your deeds speak louder than words, and you can be gracious and humble when it's time to talk about what you've done. Ideas need time to grow and change, just like live things do. When we talk about our plans too soon, we let harsh criticism and doubt attack our new ideas. According to Marcus Aurelius, we should grow our ideas in the rich soil of our thoughts so that they can become strong and developed. Think about what it takes to write a book. At first, your idea is weak, like a sprout that is just starting to grow. Sharing it too soon can make people doubt it, which can make you not want to grow it further. You will be better prepared to deal with the problems and changes that come with the creative process if you protect your idea, let it grow, and let it become a strong story. Failure is a part of every path that leads to success. When we tell a lot of people about our plans, failing can be embarrassing and discouraging because everyone can see it. Marcus Aurelius, on the other hand, has a different view on failure, one of quiet reflection and resilience. You can think about your failures, learn from them, and use them as stepping stones to get better when you're alone with your ideas. You save yourself the extra stress of having to live up to what other people expect of you by keeping your plans a secret. As a useful teacher, this lets you try new things, take chances, and be open to the possibility of failing. It's important to be honest these days, and Marcus Aurelius's advice fits in nicely with that value. You can be more genuine in your actions and relationships when you don't tell people about your plans ahead of time. You no longer have to put on a show or look for approval. Think about someone who says they want to run a race but doesn't have the drive and determination to do it. They might get praise at first, but when they fail to reach their goal, it's clear that they aren't being honest. That being said, someone who trains quietly every day and finishes the race without any fuss is seen as real and true to their actions. When you don't tell people about your plans ahead of time, your actions are in line with what you really want to do. When your motivation comes from inside you instead of outside approval, you become more true to yourself in what you do. Self-reliance is another essential Stoic concept. Marcus Aurelius thought that the most important things in our lives should be our inner power and resilience. By trusting our own sense and decision, we become more self-reliant when we don't tell other people about our plans. Let us say you want to start your own business. You've carefully thought through every step and are now ready to take the plunge. You don't look for support or approval from other people. Instead, you have faith in your own skills and beliefs. Being self-reliant gives you the strength to keep going even when things go wrong. It's simple to get caught up in the end result in our fast-paced world and forget to enjoy the trip itself. Roman Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius taught us that life is a process of growth and self-improvement that never ends. We change our attention from the end goal to the daily steps that will get us there when we don't tell other people about our plans. 
Think about someone who wants to learn how to play an instrument. If they keep talking about their plans to become virtuosos, they might get too focused on the end goal, which is to play difficult pieces perfectly. But if they keep their goals to themselves and focus on daily practice, the small steps forward that they make, make them happy and satisfied. You are better able to fully engage yourself in the present moment by not telling people about your plans too soon. You value the small wins, the lessons you learn from failures, and the way the trip changes you. One of the most important skills for both good leadership and personal success is the ability to make promises and then keep them. You give yourself the best chance to go above and beyond when you don't tell everyone what you want to do, but instead work quietly toward your goals. When you're given a job at work, let's say you don't tell your team about your big plans and strategies. Instead, you keep them to yourself. Using your skills and knowledge, you work hard behind the scenes. When you finally show off the finished project, it's even better than everyone thought it would be. This way of doing things fits in nicely with the Stoic theory and Marcus Aurelius's wise words. You can do well without anyone knowing about your plans if you don't tell them. Your deeds will speak for themselves. This way of setting goals and then exceeding them can help you gain trust, respect and chances to move up in your personal and work life. When it comes to making decisions, intuition and gut are very helpful. Marcus Aurelius thought that if we don't tell anyone about our plans, we can get in touch with our own inner knowledge and judgment. When we don't tell other people what our plans are, our gut feelings and instincts have a bigger say in what we do. Think about a big choice you have to make in your life, like picking a job path. If you tell other people about your plans, they and outside forces may change your mind. But if you don't tell anyone about your goals, you make a holy place where your instincts can lead you to the road that fits with your true values and wants. You learn to trust your gut and make choices that are in line with your true self by putting this stoic concept into practice. This could help you live a life that is more in line with your true calling and meaning. Marcus Aurelius says to be careful about telling other people your plans, but he doesn't say to live alone. He knew how important it was to get real help from people he could trust. The important thing is to only tell people who really want what's best for you about your goals. Think about how important it is to have a small group of confidants, like friends, family or teachers, who really back your goals. Telling them about your plans not only gives you support, but it also gives you useful information and direction. These people become the strong and wise foundations of your life. By looking for and keeping this kind of real support, you build a group of friends who can help you along the way. Sharing only some of your plans with the right people makes sure that you get the support and advice you need, while also keeping other people from looking too closely at your goals. Mastery in any subject takes a lot of hard work and practice. Marcus Aurelius knew that to be truly great, you often need to be alone and in silence. When we don't tell people about our plans ahead of time, we give ourselves the time and space to practice deeply. Think about the story of a young person who wants to get better at what they do. They don't continually look for approval on social media or in public shows. Instead, they spend countless hours practicing alone. They get better at what they do, try out new ideas, and be creative to the fullest. They achieve a level of skill that sticks out in a world full of mediocrity by training in silence, away from the prying eyes and criticism of others. The level of their work and how hard they work speak for themselves. The road of quiet knowledge and not telling people about your plans is not a goal, it is a way of life. Developing this habit is an ongoing process that changes as you grow as a person. Adaptation is very important, so be open to changing how you do things. Things can change quickly in life, and you may need to make changes to your plans. 
Stoicism teaches us to accept the things we can't change and make the best of situations that come up. Develop resilience in the face of mistakes and losses. It is crucial. Challenges should be seen as chances to learn and grow. When things don't go as planned, think about how you can use that to your benefit. A stoic mindset can be maintained through reflection and writing. Think about your choices and actions on a regular basis, incorporating stoic principles, and keep track of your progress in living a good life. It's important to keep learning, so keep looking into and learning more about Stoic thought. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius is a timeless work of wisdom, but there are many other Stoic works and current versions that can help you learn more. Support and community are very important. Look for towns or groups of people who share your interest in Stoicism. Talking to people who are going through the same thing can give you useful advice, help, and motivation. The main reason to follow Stoic advice and keep your plans a secret is to find happiness and mental peace. You can feel happy no matter what is going on around you if you make sure your actions are in line with your values and focus on what you can control. Remember what Marcus Aurelius said, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. If you follow the Stoic philosophy and don't tell people your plans, you can live a life full of happiness, purpose and wisdom. Stoic ideals will continue to help you on your journey. Now we're going on a trip that explores the old knowledge of Stoicism and how it can be used in the present day. It's not about simple tricks or quick fixes. Instead, we'll look at 10 methods that will change how you see and value yourself as well as how others see and value you. Every one of these ideas can help you become more powerful, respected and self-valued. If you've ever felt like you were just a number lost in the crowd, this video will help you break free and enter a space of true self-love and strength. Start by appreciating your time. Do you sometimes feel like you're always there for other people, but not for yourself? Let's talk about why it's important to value your time. Just imagine that it's a normal Wednesday and you're at work. Whenever someone needs help, they come to you. Emails from co-workers, texts from friends and calls from family are always coming through on your phone. They may all seem like small things, but they add up. By the end of the day, you realize that you haven't done any of your own work. Even though you're helping other people, your own projects are behind schedule, and then it hits you. Saying yes to other people means you often have to say no to your own goals. It's not that we don't have enough time to live, but that we waste a lot of it, said the famous Stoic philosopher Seneca. Life is long enough, and it has been given to us in generous measure to achieve the greatest things if it is well invested. Think about that for a moment. Every minute you spend is an investment, do you know how to spend it well? Value your time doesn't mean you have to be unavailable. It means you respect yourself enough to set priorities. You need to know that not every job, invitation or request needs your full attention right away. Before you say yes the next time, stop and ask yourself, is this the best use of my time? Does this make my life better? Or does it drain me and keep me from what's important? Think about this for a second. Now look around at the people that are there. Do you notice that people respect those who say no in a smart way? There you have it. The power of value your time. They aren't just living their lives. They're writing their own music. Like them, you can be one of them. Always keep in mind that respecting your time means more than just saying no. It means recognizing your worth. You're telling yourself and everyone else that you value your time. I am worth spending time on. My time is very valuable. We now know how to value our time. Let's look at how taking care of ourselves can change our sense of self-worth. The second thing is to take care of yourself first. Let's discuss self-care as we move on to our next plan. Remember a time when you skipped lunch to finish work or your evening walk to go to another meeting. 
Feeling how at the end of the day? Taken aback? Need a break? That means you care about other people more than yourself. We all do it. We put everything and everyone else first, but forget about the one person who really matters. You. Keep in mind what Marcus Aurelius said. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. This quote fits perfectly with our second plan. It reminds us that our happiness and well-being come from inside us, not from things outside of us. You're not being selfish when you put your own health and happiness first. You're just realizing that your ability to help others depends on it. It is very important to realize that taking care of yourself is not a luxury, but a must for a healthy and happy life. Imagine that you are always there for everyone, ready to give a hand, a shoulder, or an ear. You often forget about your own needs while doing this, which makes you feel worn out and less successful. Here's where Marcus Aurelius's smarts come in handy. Simply inquire, when was the last time you did something unique and special for yourself? Someone or something that gave you energy and peace? It is very important to put these needs first, whether that means doing sports, meditating, or getting enough rest. Not only does it improve your health, but it also gives you the tools to be a better support system for others. Now, give yourself a moment to think. What does it mean to you to take care of yourself? How can you take better care of yourself while also being there for other people? Sharing your stories in the comments could not only help you understand and heal, but it could also inspire and guide people who are going through the same things. Someone else may find your story inspiring and decide to start their own journey of self-care. Do not forget that taking care of ourselves is important if we want to be respected by others. Now that you understand this, let's look at our next calm way to improve how people see and value us. The third tip is to talk less and listen more. As much as we want to be heard, we forget how powerful silence can be. In this lesson on Stoicism, we learn a basic rule that is easy to forget. Listen more and speak less. By taking this method, our exchanges and relationships can change in big ways. Remember a time when someone paid attention to you instead of just waiting their turn. What did it feel like to be appreciated and understood at that time? We often forget how powerful active listening can be in this situation. Being quiet isn't enough. You have to really listen and respond to what's being said to make a stronger connection. Epictetus said something very wise. We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This brilliant quote sums up our third strategy and helps us remember how important it is to actively listen in our everyday conversations. Real listening is more than just hearing what someone says. It also means knowing, caring, and giving them your full attention. Listening makes the other person feel understood, important, and listened to. Being polite isn't enough. It's also a powerful sign of mindfulness and care. Just think about how often we're thinking about what to say next while someone else is still talking. By doing this, we miss the point of what is being said. To listen actively, we have to be fully present and put aside our own plans in order to see things from someone else's point of view. If you want to try this out, Try to listen more and speak less the next time you're with someone. Pay attention to what they're saying, how they say it, and how they feel about it. Nod to show that you understand, ask questions to make sure you understand, and think about what you've heard. This way of doing things not only helps you learn more, but it also makes your relationship stronger. Now, take a moment to think about a chat you had not long ago. Were you really listening? or were you just ready to join the conversation? Think about how different that conversation would have been if you had learned how to truly listen. By practicing the skill of listening, we not only get closer to other people, but we also learn more. Remember that in the world of conversation, being able to listen well is worth a lot. 
Now let's move on to the next approach, where we'll keep looking for quiet, wisdom-based ways to improve our appearance and worth. The fourth rule is to always be yourself. We often forget a simple truth when we're trying to be more appreciated. What makes us unique is that we are real. If you want to be a writer, write, Epictetus said. It's about doing what shows who you really are. It's not enough to just accept who you are. You have to be true to yourself all the time. People tend to follow the crowd, but your true self stands out. Being real doesn't just make you unique, it also makes you useful at work and in your personal life. Consider your day. What part of what you say and do is really you, and what part is what other people expect? Letting go of these demands is part of being real. Truthfully, living means following what you really think and feel. Others want to be around you because of the way you live. Being real makes people trust and connect with you more. When you're honest, you make relationships stronger. Think of a time, maybe at a party, when you felt like you had to change your views and hobbies to fit in. Compare that to a time when you were yourself and didn't care what other people thought. How open did that make you feel? When we think about these times, we can see how important it is to be real in our lives. Showing your real self the one that no one else can copy, is truly genuine. As a final thought, keep in mind that being yourself isn't just about standing out. It's also about being happy and sure of who you are. Being honest earns you respect and makes people value you more. Stay tuned for our next plan, which will give you even more power on your path to self-discovery and acceptance. 5. Ask other people to help you. The art of letting other people add to your life is a method that is often missed on the path to being more valuable. A great Stoic ruler named Marcus Aurelius believed in the power of helping each other. He said that people are made to work together, like feet, hands, eyes, and the rows of upper and lower teeth. This powerful comparison helps us remember that asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but a normal and necessary part of getting along with other people. Think about a time when you had a lot of work to do and felt stressed and overloaded. Now, think about what would have happened if a co-worker had stepped in to help. Feelings like that. Thoughts. Helped. Respected. And a part of a group, right? Not only does it make our lives easier when other people help us, but it also builds community and respect. Some people find it hard to accept help, especially if they are used to being on their own. But keep in mind that the people in your life value the chance to help you just as much as you value the chance to help others. The relationship works both ways, which builds trust and makes ties stronger. When someone offers to help you with a job or a small task, you might want to say yes. Not only will they feel appreciated, but you'll also be creating a network of people who can help each other. This network helps you live a more valuable and linked life, at work and in your daily life. We learn a lot about being humble and thankful when we accept help from others. Sharing our lives with others makes them better too, because we live in a world where everyone is linked. Though we look at these techniques further, Remember that being respected isn't just about what you can do by yourself. It's also about how you connect with others. We're now ready to find the next step in our plan to become more recognized and valued. Sixth, remember to stay cool. When things just seem to go wrong, have you ever been there? It's important to learn how to stay cool and collected during these times. This method, which comes from stoic thought, is very important if we want to be more respected. The best remedy for anger is delay, Seneca wisely said. This advice is very important for how we deal with tough situations. Think of a time when everything was going wrong. It could have been a tough meeting at work or a situation at home that made you lose your cool. When these things happen, our first reaction might be to act without thinking because our feelings are so strong. 
What if you stopped, took a deep breath, and decided to be calm instead of acting on impulse? Keeping calm in such a hot situation not only stops things from getting worse, but it also gets you respect and admiration from those around you. Being cool and collected doesn't mean being uncaring or passive. It means picking how to react to things. Your self-control is a strong sign of your inner strength and steadiness, which makes people automatically respect and value you. Remember Seneca's advice the next time you find yourself in a challenging position. Make the most of the power of pause to stay calm. Being able to keep your cool under pressure not only changes how things turn out, but it also makes you seem like a more grounded, wise person who brings clarity and reason to every exchange. We learn an important lesson about the power of our inner state as we use this method in our daily lives. The outside noise doesn't make us who we are. How we choose to deal with it does. Now that we're calm, we're ready to move on to the next plan that will help us get even more respect and credit. Seventh, keep some things secret. We learn the worth of subtlety, which comes from stoic thought as we work to be more highly regarded. Epictetus said, be silent most of the time, or if you speak, say only what is necessary and in a few words. This advice shows how important it is to carefully choose what to share and what to keep to ourselves. Imagine that you're at a party or even online when you suddenly feel the urge to tell everyone everything about your personal life. Remember how strong it is to hold back in these situations Sharing everything is not necessary. Sharing only what's important makes you stronger and earns you respect. Doing so carefully and with thought. Being discreet doesn't mean lying or hiding things. It means respecting the privacy of your own life. Many people share too much these days, so choosing to keep some things to yourself shows that you are thoughtful and value your own space Every time you're about to say something sensitive, take a moment to think about it. Is this knowledge for everyone, or is it something important to me? This wisdom not only keeps you calm, but it also makes people value you more. Accepting privacy helps us see how important our inner world is and how others treat it with care. Keeping this in mind as we talk to each other, let's remember that what we choose not to share makes us stronger. Now, let's look at the next plan, which will help us build our position and respect even more. Number eight, always learn and improve. Getting more treasured and admired means learning new things and growing all the time. Seneca said, as long as you live, keep learning how to live. This timeless advice emphasizes the value of ongoing self-improvement and change in our lives. Think of a time when you had to do something that was different from what you were used to. It could be picking up a new hobby, learning a new skill at work, or even getting used to a big change in your life. How did it feel to go into the deepest black hole? There may have been doubt or pain at first, but over time, these events probably helped them grow and give them a sense of accomplishment. Having a mindset of constant learning is more than just picking up new facts or skills. It's about growing as a person. Know that the road to self-improvement never ends and that each step, no matter how small, is a way to become a better, more valued person. To use this approach, you should make learning a daily habit. You can read books, listen to podcasts, or go to classes or events. Not only does this keep your mind sharp, but it also shows that you are dedicated to growing as a person. And people naturally feel drawn to people who are always changing because they give off an air of energy and inspiration. Others are inspired to think about their own growth paths by yours. They are inspired to grow when they see you taking on new tasks and learning from them. People who pledge to learning throughout their lives are not only improving their skills and knowledge, but they are also making themselves better overall. Growing all the time not only makes other people value us more, 
but it also gives our own lives more meaning and purpose. Remember that following this road of ongoing growth opens up doors to options you could never have thought. Stay tuned as we reveal our final plan, a one-of-a-kind method that can surprise you with how much it can increase your value. Keep a feeling of wonder, number nine. We learn how to keep things mysterious in our last plan on this life-changing trip. Stoic ideas have a lot to do with this approach, which reminds us of how important it is to not tell everyone everything about ourselves at once. It means giving off an air of mystery and depth that makes people want to know more and respect you. Consider this. Don't you find it more interesting when a new person you meet doesn't tell you everything about themselves right away. The idea is the same. People are more interested in getting to know you if you carefully choose what information about yourself you share. It's not about being hidden or dishonest to keep a sense of wonder. It's about being picky about what you share and when you share it. Knowing that less is more is sometimes what you need. People will want to get to know you better if you share just enough to get them interested, but don't say everything. To use this approach, be careful about what you say about your daily life, goals and accomplishments. Actions speak louder than words, and being there will get people's attention. When you share, do it with purpose and thought, which will make you seem even more mysterious. This way of thinking isn't just about how other people see you, it's also about valuing and honoring your own story. You have power over your story and how it plays out for the world if you keep it mysterious. Remember that a little surprise can go a long way toward making people value and respect you more. People will be more likely to lean in and listen when you do decide to share parts of your story. Accept this road and you'll see how it makes people respect and admire you in new ways. As we wrap up our look at these methods, keep in mind that they are steps toward a deep inner transformation. Every technique we've talked about is an important part of making your life one where you are seen and truly respected. Many thanks to everyone who has traveled with us. Your commitment to growing as a person and giving yourself power is admirable. Right now, you're not just watching a video, you're also taking steps to make yourself more valuable and recognized. Now, I'd like to talk to you, our valuable fans. Which one of these ideas made the most sense to you? Are you ready to make one of them a part of your life? Watch the transformation in how the rest of the world sees and views you as you use these techniques in your daily life. Remember that every step you take is one more toward a more valuable and purposeful life, something so outside and temporary. For many people, relationships depend a lot on how convenient they are. For example, co-workers are thrown together by chance, old room friends are spread out by new jobs, and partners break up because their interests change. There are times in life when even the strongest bonds weaken because loved ones move away or become less close. If our sense of self depends on how often our friends call, then identity is like a roller coaster. It can drop out of sight at any time. How can someone build lasting self-trust if their roots are easy to shake when other people do? First, look at who you become in each moment, whether you're getting praise or being left alone. Knowing your core skills and values is the only way to find a sense of connection that goes beyond what the crowd is into at the moment. If you base yourself on morals, you will always be happy. Fair weather friends can come and go, but your inner light will always be there. Tenth lesson, if you are alone because of your morals, be proud of them. For standing up for our greatest values, we may be left out or abandoned at times. When there is a lot of corruption and dishonesty, being honest is hard to do. A lot of people go to the easy but riskier paths, but the Stoics tell us to be proud of what we say and do, even if it means going alone, because being left out of society is not an insult when doing justice. Can someone be ashamed of telling the truth in groups that want silence, 
sharing food in places where hunger rules, or standing up for people who have been left out by groups that are filled with fear or hate. When souls live off of lies, facts turn into extreme defiance. In these kinds of situations, being honest costs a lot, and being alone hurts a lot. But this is nothing compared to the deeper wounds of moral compromise, where our spirit is broken when we betray our morals to get what the court wants. Epictetus said, if given the choice between being liked and being good, the true Stoic would cry, if only people understood that I am doing nothing wrong, but if they do not, may they hate my body and what is on it. So, let go of your need to be liked or accepted. When it comes to losing friends, ignoble ease gets short-term support, but nobler ways bring about self-respect and long-lasting partners. Plant seeds of unity and hope for a fair life at the right time. Stay true and have heart. One day, aware souls will join. Your stand by yourself. Lesson 11. Learn to depend on yourself. A stoic person would do best by themselves. To face total isolation with courage rather than despair is the ultimate stoic test of emotional resilience. Because someone who knows how to be self-reliant can make any place look like a flower garden just by being there. Stoics work out this muscle by removing all distractions and company for a short time so they can face themselves directly. There was no small talk, news or small jobs to keep people from getting bored. Just hours to be alone with nature and think. Here, you have to look inside yourself and ask the deep things that people shy away from in public. How well do I live each moment by my best values? Do the decisions I make every day come from strength or fear? How can I make my character stronger and make a bigger difference than just enjoying things? Such skilled silence builds an inner strength that no amount of chows can break down, because if you know your own inner mind and accept its direction, you can walk with faith even when other people are around. You become less affected by being left out by others, and you stop looking for large groups of friends to ease your inner turmoil. As life goes on, you are free to join or stay apart from this place of wholeness, not wanting anything, not missing anything, being self-sufficient, but not connected. The Stoic promise is clear. People who make friends with themselves will never be left alone. If you face the wildness inside you, heaven will always be around you. Today, enjoy being alone, and soon you'll feel like you need to be with someone again. Because when we are one, we are never really alone again. To find true friends, you should work on mastering yourself. Relationships can develop over time with knowledge. Now we're back to the stoic view on friendship. It is the most valuable thing in life, but it is also very unlikely to come true. Most relationships will only touch the surface and never go deep into our deepest, most sensitive wants and needs. On the other hand, this is why the stoics say we should stop wishing for perfect partners right now to make us whole, because nothing hurts close relationships more than panic, connection, or standards that aren't met by imperfect people. Instead, they tell you to do something very strange. Stop looking for friends altogether. Instead, focus on making friends with yourself. Master your inner environment. By taking very good care of yourself, practicing awareness, and always growing as an ethical person. First, get comfortable in your own shoes with your unique qualities and flaws. Build a base of health inside yourself that can't be shaken by outside events. After that, and only then, can you truly give and receive the most wonderful gift of friendship for all time. Being fully present gives you the patience to let people that are a good fit naturally cross your path. You get smarter by looking for people who are like you. Once you have rested in your wholeness, you will find that your days are full of lively, meaningful interactions with other people. And just maybe, one day you'll find the luck of true friendship. When it comes, be ready to take it all in. But for now, don't wait for company to get better before you get better at yourself. 
I hope that these stoic ideas have prompted self-reflection on the relationships you have with others right now. They might have even given you ideas for how to strengthen the relationships you already have by being more present and brave with them. But words don't mean much if nothing is done. So, before we part ways today, think of at least one real thing you can do next to find the kind of company you want. Make a promise and write it down. At first, the step doesn't have to be big or loud. As you get going, you might call an old friend who came to mind while you were watching this video. You won't just like their posts from afar, you'll actually ask them out. Or you'll have a brave, honest conversation with a co-worker you've always wanted to learn more about. Or start small by choosing one new social habit to add to your daily life. For example, you could say hello to one new person at the gym every week, or ask thoughtful questions when friends talk about problems, instead of just saying, that stinks. Over time, these small acts of kindness will grow into bigger relationships. Pick something that is real and doable for you. Small steps forward are better at keeping people motivated than big moves that are likely to fail. Keep going with care and start where you are. Let ties grow naturally. Then tell us what you plan to do next in the comments. Being accountable to other people in public helps motivate us and we can support each other. Little things you do every day that you stick to will lead to big friendships tomorrow. Set small goals to make meaningful relationships. Imagine a time in the future when your life is full of meaning, happiness and plenty. Every morning you feel energetic and ready to take on whatever comes your way. Bring that idea back to the present. As you watch or listen to this video, I want you to picture yourself giving up those bad habits that hurt you and changing them with ones that will help you do well in Stoic philosophy. Through their ideas, actions and decisions, individuals are thought to have the ability to create their own future. One can live a wise, peaceful and good life by forming good habits and getting rid of bad ones. It's not what happens to you that counts, but how you handle it, as Epictetus said. Get rid of bad habits right now to start changing and remember that small steps lead to big results. Let us do it. Number one, too much materialism. Individuals frequently mistake income and material things for happiness and success, which is a common problem in modern society. Stoics, on the other hand, think that these kinds of activities can make people unhappy and take away from meaningful encounters. If you want to stop being too materialistic, you need to become less materialistic and focus on events, relationships and personal growth instead. Changing how you think about what really counts is an effective way to fight selfish habits. Individuals should put more emphasis on developing inner traits like knowledge, courage, justice and temperance rather than focusing on outward indicators of success like belongings, standing or looks. You can find a deeper sense of satisfaction that you can't get from material things alone if you put ethics first. Number two, looking for proof from outside sources. There are a lot of people who have trouble with this problem. If we want to feel good about ourselves, it can be tempting to always look for other people's support and recognition. This habit, on the other hand, can be bad for our mental health and well-being. When we count too much on outside support, it's easy to become hooked on other people's views and approval. In other words, our happiness becomes dependent on things outside of ourselves. When those outside factors are taken away or aren't present, we may feel unsafe and unhappy. Stoic philosophy stresses how important it is to like yourself and be happy inside. Stoics advise us to work on building our own inner power and character rather than looking for approval from others. In order to feel fulfilled and happy, we can work on developing qualities like knowledge, courage and fairness. When we are this self-reliant, we can stay happy even when things go wrong or when other people criticize us. 
Looking for approval from other people can be good for our mental health, but it can also hurt our relationships. If we are always looking for approval from other people, we might seem needy or anxious. This can hurt our relationships and make other people think badly of us. We can build better, more real relationships based on shared respect and understanding if we work on our own personal growth and development. Number three, thinking about it. This is a common habit that can cause a lot of emotional pain. It can be bad for our mental health and well-being to constantly think about mistakes we've made or worry about what might happen in the future. When we dwell, our minds tend to stay on bad thoughts, which can make us feel guilty, ashamed, and anxious. We may not be able to move forward or enjoy life in the present when we are feeling these bad emotions. An effective way to stop ruminating is to practice mindfulness. Stoicism pushes individuals to live in the present and pay attention to their current situations. One of its central ideas is mindfulness. Being aware helps us let go of the past and stop thinking about what will happen in the future. We instead focus on what is happening right now and how to stay calm and clear while going through it. Paying attention to our feelings, thoughts and senses without judging them is part of mindfulness practice. We pay attention to our thoughts without getting caught up in them or moving without thinking. This helps us understand how we think and feel by making us more aware of our mental and emotional states. Being more self-aware helps us better control our feelings and thoughts, which lowers the frequency and severity of negative ruminating. 4. Don't be afraid of change. It can be hard to accept change when you're used to sticking to the same habits and routines. But sometimes change is important to get better and grow as a person. A lot of great people say that they got where they are by being willing to take chances and adapt to new situations. How then can you get over your fear of change? To begin, it's important to know that change is not something to be afraid of. As an alternative, it should be seen as a chance to learn and grow. Giving yourself the chance to try new things can help you learn more about yourself and the world. You can develop resilience and confidence by going outside of your safe zone. To get over your fear of change, one useful tip is to begin small. Instead of making a big change in your life, try making small changes to the things you do every day. Try something new, like a new way to work out or a different kind of food. You will start to trust yourself more and be more open to making bigger changes in the future as you see how these small changes are making your life better. Focusing on the possible benefits of change is another good way to go about it. What new opportunities might come your way if you are open to change? What ways could it make your life or job better? Seeing these good things happen can help you stay focused and inspired during the change. Fifth, don't worry about small things. People often deal with thinking too much about small things, which is one of the worst habits they can have. This steady state of anger can be caused by many things, like personal fears, social media, the news, or rumors. It's important to remember, though, that a lot of this knowledge is useless and doesn't make you happier or more fulfilled. Stoicism tells us to spend our time and energy on things that really matter instead of worrying about things that don't matter. We can train ourselves to concentrate on what's important and block out the rest by having a stoic mindset. This doesn't mean we should cut ourselves off from everyone else. Instead, we should learn how to interact with the world in a way that doesn't disturb our inner peace. To break this pattern, we can begin by figuring out where we lose the most time and energy on things that don't matter. This could mean checking our phone texts all the time, being worried about what might happen in the future, or dwelling on mistakes we've made in the past. We can use stoic thinking to fight these trends once we know what they are. When we worry, we can ask ourselves if they are in line with our values and goals, and if they will really make a difference in the long run. 
Setting limits on our time and attention is another method that can help. We can limit our exposure to things that make us anxious, like staying away from certain social media sites or not watching too much TV. Through making time for mindfulness and reflection, we can find inner peace that will help us deal with problems that come up out of the blue. Sixth, never try to get even. Getting payback might make you feel good in the short term, but it ends up hurting both of you in the long run. Focusing on other people's well-being and finding inner peace, according to Stoic philosophy, are much more important goals than getting even. Revenge can be bad because it makes bad things happen over and over again. It can also make you feel guilty, ashamed and sorry. On top of that, it takes up a lot of mental and emotional energy that could be used for good things. Stoics hold that, because attacks and wrongdoings are outside of their power, individuals should try to be unaffected by them. We should instead work on making the world and ourselves better. These people think that real power comes from within and that we should always try to be good and moral. It can be really hard to forgive people who have hurt us, but it is a strong way to find peace and move on. As soon as we forgive, we stop carrying an anger and give ourselves permission to heal. It also makes you more compassionate, empathetic and understanding, all of which are important for keeping relationships healthy. Seeking payback can be good for our mental health, but it can hurt our relationships and image. Forgiving others, on the other hand, can make our relationships stronger. Number seven, don't waste time. Because time is limited, it is important to make the most of every moment. The Stoics thought that each person should make good use of their time because it was a gift. Unfortunately, a lot of us waste time on things that don't help us grow or improve our general health. To get rid of this bad habit and make the most of your time, try these. First, figure out what's most important to you and focus on that. According to Stoic philosophy, one should concentrate on what they can change. In the same way, we should concentrate on what matters to us. Figure out what's important to you and spend your time on that. Get rid of any actions that aren't in line with your goals or ideals. Second, take a strategic method to fixing issues. Do something to reach your goals instead of waiting for things to happen. The Stoics think that virtue is its own prize and that we can be happy and satisfied if we work toward our goals. Finally, show thanks. The act of gratitude helps us enjoy the good things in our lives and find happiness. To live a fuller life, we should think about what we have instead of what we don't have. Don't forget that time is valuable and that we can only use it so many times. We can live a fuller life and make the most of every moment by following stoic ideals. So start today by writing down your goals, fixing problems before they happen and showing thanks. The eighth tip is to stop looking for problems. It's easy to get caught up in the habit of looking for problems all the time, but as Stoics teach us, it's much more useful to focus on what we can control and work to solve those problems. To be proactive, we need to change our mindset from reacting to things to fixing them. One way to do this is to change the way we think about issues. We don't have to see them as bad things. We can see them as trials we need to conquer. Now that we see things from a different angle, we can face problems with confidence and determination, knowing that getting through them will help us grow as people. One more thing we can do is focus on the things we can manage and let go of the rest. Quite often, we waste time and energy worried about things we can't change. Letting go of these worries gives us more time to think about the important things. We also need to keep in mind that problems can actually be chances. Stoic philosophers thought that problems were sent to us to see how strong we were and to test our resolution. When you meet a problem, you should welcome it and see it as a chance to get better. And finally, we should always try to keep a good mood. It can be hard to find answers when we're feeling down or beaten, 
and criticism only makes things worse. Having a cheerful attitude helps us deal with problems with an open mind and heart, which increases our chances of finding good answers. We can start living a life that fits with stoic values by changing the way we see things and developing a problem-solving mindset. Let's stop trying to find issues and start looking for ways to fix them. The ninth thing is impulsivity. People often make bad choices and feel bad about them later because they were too impulsive. It means acting on quick urges or whims without giving them much thought or reflection. The Stoics, on the other hand, advise their followers to fight this urge and instead make decisions after giving them more thought. To control our impulses, we need to slow down and think about what might happen if we do something before we do it. This means we need to think about whether the action we want to take fits with our morals and long-term goals. It also means thinking about the risks and benefits that might happen and comparing them. Stoics think that feelings can make it difficult to think clearly, which can cause people to make bad choices. Because of this, they stress how important it is to separate oneself from one's feelings and look at things rationally. Developing self-discipline is another important part of controlling your impulses. This means being able to put off getting what you want right now in order to get something better in the long run. For example, someone who wants to save money shouldn't spend it right away. Instead, they should put it away for later use. It's also important to work on finding inner peace and calm in addition to these useful tips. This happens when we accept the things we can't change and pay attention to the things we can. By living in harmony with nature and appreciating the present moment, we can become more calm and clear, which helps us make better choices. Overall, getting rid of recklessness requires a commitment to making decisions after careful thought and a readiness to practice self-discipline. By learning from the Stoics, we can learn to say no to the temptation of quick satisfaction and instead choose a road that leads to more happiness and success. Tenth, stop being upset. A lot of people have trouble with this habit. We might whine about the weather, our work, our relationships, or many other things we think aren't going the way we want them to. But whining rarely results in meaningful answers and can even make our lives more stressful and depressing. Stoicism tells us to accept what we can't change and focus on the things we can. When we complain, it's usually because we're upset or angry about something we can't change. It's better to stay away from bad feelings when we know that some things are out of our control. Instead, we can focus our energy on things we can control. We can stop whining and focus on what we can do. We can work to change things that make us sad. This could mean looking for new chances, talking to other people, or taking action to make our own lives better. We can make things better in our lives and turn things around by taking action. Also, we should know that whining won't change the fact that bad things do happen to us. When things like this happen, it can help to be thankful for what we do have and search for the lessons or chances that can come from them. A change in mindset from negative to positive and action is needed to finally stop complaining. To change our lives and become better, more satisfied people, we need to focus on what we can control and do something about it. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the principles of Stoicism and their application towards achieving the good life. We hope this guide has provided you with valuable insights and practical tools to navigate life's challenges with wisdom, courage and serenity. Remember, the path to a fulfilling life is not about avoiding hardship, but learning how to transform obstacles into opportunities for growth. Embrace the stoic practice of reflecting on your experiences, staying present and making choices aligned with your highest values. Let the lessons you've learned today guide you towards a more purposeful and peaceful existence.
Until next time, continue to cultivate your inner strength and live your life with virtue. Farewell, and may you find the tranquility and happiness that comes from living a life according to nature.